Hello everyone, it's Karen here from toughestcolour.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, today's project is this rather sweet little gift box, which is all in shades of yellow. It's very bright and spring-like because, do you know what? Spring has arrived in earnest here in South Wales. It's lovely. And uh, inside is a little votive. It's a Yankee Candle Sicilian Lemon one. Uh, but you could make it in any sort of colours that fit whatever votive you happen to have. So it's a lovely simple little project and if you'd like to stay with me I'll show you how I made it. Here's my Daffodil Delight cardstock and I've cut it to six inches by eight and a half inches and I'm going to score it at two inches four inches, six inches, six and a quarter inches, and eight and a quarter inches. That's right. Oops. And I'm going to turn it and score it at two inches and four inches. And along the top here, I'm going to score at the quarter inch mark, just down as far as that score line there. And the same thing here at one and three quarter inches down as far as there. And those are my cut lines. I'll come back to that in a minute. And while I've got my scoreboard out, I've got a piece for the lid, which is um, crushed curry, uh, crushed curry DSP. And I'm going to make the lid out of this and it's three and a half inches square and I'm using my lid shim uh, which is a brilliant idea I got from Connie Stewart and I'm going to score at three quarters of an inch all the way around and quite honestly it's easier to just turn the paper and put that at three quarters of an inch all the way around so I can now put my simply scored out of the way and I'm going to turn that because that will drive me mad and I'm going to do some cutting. So I'm going to cut uh, those lines there. there I'm cutting all my flaps and similarly on this side here and I sorry just a moment of existential uncertainty there I thought I'd scored in the wrong place but I haven't all is well those bits on one side because they will come in handy later and I'm going to slip out those corners On these, this one and this one, because that's the way I only need about half of it, so I'm going to chop those bits off as well. Anything you can do, you can do to reduce bulk when you're making a box is a good thing. It is a very good thing. So I'm going to put those pieces out of the way. And I'm just going to train those folds. Okay. And that's the that's the shape of my box cut out. Now I've got my inch and three quarter circle punch and I'm going to uh, first of all I'm going to cut 
actually. Oh, a piece of scrap paper. And I'm just going to punch out. And I've got a bit of snail. I should put it on the back. And I shall tap my fingers over to detacky it a bit. And I'm going to use this as a placement guide so that my circle is nice and centrally placed. So I should do that. Now I can come back in with my punch. And I can be sure that I'm pretty much punching in the right place. And that's going to be my hole for my for my votive. Right. Before I go any further, uh, I'm going to stamp before I assemble the box. So I've got... Uh, where is it? Come here. There it is. It's from this set, which is called Petite Petals. And I'm using that one there. And I've got crushed curry, I think it is. Yep, crushed curry ink. And I'm just going to do some random stamping. Not bothering too much with that because that's going to be the bottom. Let's do some stamping off. Before I assemble the box, um, these pieces here are going to fold this way. I have to be quite careful because even though it's card, it can still. So they will fold that way, and that will fold that way. And that folds that way and that holds my that's going to hold my votive right now I'm going to use sticky strip rather than um, ra rather than snail or anything else because I want to have a bit of control over where it all lands and how it all lands so just a little teeny tiny bit of sticky strip along there for the rest of it uh, I wouldn't use snail because snail isn't really tough enough for cardboard um, I fast fuse will do fine and that's probably what I'm going to use uh, or since I've got the since I've got the sticky strip out, I may well go with the sticky strip. I don't know. I have, I have options. I can choose. Okay, so the glue goes on that side, the inside. Oh, that's going to make my head mad. Oh, excuse me a minute. Let's get me. That's better. Uh, the sticky strip goes on the inside, and. Uh, when you're putting the box together it goes on these sides so let's go on and do that right now how brave I'm being. Eh. 
taking the backing off the sticky strip without a safety net. Ta ta ta! Oh, it's got a bit of old static el electricery going on there, which is doing me head in, quite frankly. So, that bit and that bit. Right, oops! Do what I should have done before I nearly, but not quite. I should have tabbed me edges, shouldn't I? Yeah, I should have. Silly, silly girl. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but you are folding card over and you're trying to make um, two bits of card kind of occupy the same space, which, uh, from the point of view of physics, isn't a good thing. They won't work very well. And of course, because it's got a sticky strip on it, it's all sticking to itself and sticking to everything. Tell you what, that sticky strip is well named. Right, okay. Here goes. Here we go. All right, and just bring those two corners together and bring those two corners together. Stay. And there we are. Right. Now we've got the fiddly bit. Right, and I'm back. Somebody came through the door, so sorry about that. Right. Uh, what I've done now is I've trimmed off those corners and there and there. And I'm now going to very gingerly apply the sticky strip. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to take all of that piece off. Oh, drat the stuff. And I'm just going to take part. Oh, I was just going to take part of it. <laughs> okay, let's try you want to just turn that up that way and fold those in out of the way and I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave the tape on that one just for a moment right so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that in and I'm keeping those pieces out of the way for now keeping them folded and I'm gonna go across to to this side the front of the box and I'm going to get the sticky strip backing off there and I'm going to ease that into place so that that edge is level with the top and I possibly could have done with putting a bit more sticky strip on this box but well, well you live and learn okay so that's my front and back and now nice and firm and this one which the backing's already come off shall squish that into place and take the rest of the line off the last piece and shall squish that into place get in there you and now we have our holder for our Sicilian lemon and it fits quite snug in there. That's why it's such a shallow lip, because really, um, for this size of box, you really need a punch that is one and five eighths, not one and three quarters, but Stampin' Up! don't make one. So uh, I've had to adjust the depth of the holder. Right, so the lid, uh, which you saw me score, Common or Garden, Normal way of making a box lid. Tab out the corners because it's, you know, same thing again. Try otherwise you're trying to put two pieces of paper into the same strip. I'll use a bit of 
fast fuse on this. And we'll do it again with a fast fuse on the right side this time. Here's my box lid and I'm going to snip off the corners just like that and like that, like that <laughs> and for this I could use snail but you know what fast foods works a lot better so I'm going to use some fast foods ah. And I'm going to put it on the, the right side because I want to have a spotty lid. Nearly made a schoolgirl error then. And put the glue. Come on, work. That's it. And sorry, don't forget to do the, the tick off. Table for. Oh, stay, 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 stay. I really have got to get a less bouncy table. Because for some reason, it's really showing up today. I got a new webcam. I got a smashing new webcam, which is all singing, all dancing, but it also shows up everything. Everything you don't want people to see, it's showing it. So, um, bit of a double-edged sword there okay so I'm just gonna bring my edges in I forgot the snail on both sides of that one not to worry I'll come in with my adhesive remover later neat little eraser gadget which is just wonderful actually uh, getting off the glue that you got in the places where you didn't want the glue to go. You know what I mean? Okay, now if I've measured this right, fingers crossed, that ought to fit perfectly. And it does. Look at that. How about that? So, oh, stop it. All that remains now is to decorate it. So, to finish off the decoration of the box, uh, I've stamped out the, uh, the, the stamp from the painted petals again, and uh, the petite petals, and I'm going to cut it out with my petal, my little petal punch. So I'm just going to line that up carefully, and when I'm happy with it, punch it out and flip the uh, flip the petals up a bit and add a bit of bling with a gemstone actually I could have used candy dots candy dots would have looked nice never mind I am committed to uh, I'm committed to to, uh, to bling now and I've tied a bow I'll tighten up a bit with the uh, it's called this is the daffodil delight yep daffodil delight cotton ribbon cotton ribbon's lovely it's so easy to work with it's so forgiving it's wonderful um, and I've got um, the sentiment from this set which is called a round array and I'm going to use that one which is for you and I'm still on the crushed curry and I'm just been stamping on the little off cuts uh, from the uh, from the box you see so okay and that fits quite nicely and then I've got the seven eighths of an inch scalloped punch which again just fits this perfectly which is what I just love so much about stamping up is that everything coordinates it is so clever 
all the thinking has been funk, as they say. So I'm just lining that up so it's just a little bit of board all the way around and punch. And oh, I don't know what happened there. Must have slipped. Okay, it's a good job that's just a scrap of. It's a good job that that is just a scrap of card. That is what not to do. So let's try again, shall we, children? Okay. Oh, that didn't come out very well at all. Okay, third time lucky. Here we go. And a punch. And this time I am going to hold on to it very carefully to make sure that it doesn't do what I just did. That's no big deal. We can use the we can use the other side of it for. For something, it will come in handy for something, children. That's more like it. See, that's what I meant to do. That's what I meant to do in the first place. All right, so now it's just decorating the box. So how do I want it? Like that. Okay. So, oh, glue dots, glue dots, glue dots. Where are my glue dots? Not that I am making this up as I go along, you understand. <laughs> okay, so I've got my mini glue dots, which are very useful little things. Pick one up on the back of my first flower. I put that thusly. And Ooh, what are you going, glue dots? What are you doing to me? one there. Right, now this one I'm going to put on a dimensional. Come on, coming off. There you go. And we'll sort of nestle that in there. Glue dot again, I think. Where's my last glue dot? There it is. Come on. There we go. Okay, and last of all, the ribbon. I think I'll, this time I'll take the glue dot with me. Porky duel. Which is the good side of me bow, do you think? Slight, so, yeah. Okay. There you go. And there it is. Nice little floated box with inside the lovely Yankee candle floated. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, it's been Karen from tuppenscolor.co.uk and I hope I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye now.